Hi, this is Craig and welcome to another episode of Cruising Off Duty. If you've been watching the channel, you know we're doing a transatlantic sailing series and the previous episodes were all about getting prepped. And in the last episode, we showed that we dropped the dock lines finally and headed out into the big blue Atlantic Ocean to do our 3,000 nautical mile transit from Las Palmas to St. Lucia. And in this episode, we'll talk about what it's like to be on a boat that never stops moving. We'll talk about how hard it is to prepare meals, eat meals, do watches that go through the night, and to get sleep when you're not on watch. And let's just say that I'm a light sleeper, so having a boat that constantly bounces you around and makes weird noises made it really challenging for me to try and get any sleep at all. Now, if you're someone like my wife who could sleep through World War III, and even if she did wake up, roll right over and fall instantly back asleep, this might not be an issue. But I found constantly being woken up and then having trouble getting back to sleep was really hard on my body, at least until I got used to it. But in true vlog style, I'm gonna take you along with me in this episode of Cruising Off Duty. Now, a lot of what I'm gonna tell you is probably due to the fact that I've only ever sailed my boat. I've never had someone sail it while I sleep. So when I heard the sails flapping or big bangs I couldn't understand, that woke me right up and I felt like I needed to jump out of bed. After a while, I got used to it, but for the first few days, it really kicked the crap out of me. Good morning and welcome to the second official full day at Transit Transatlantic on this 50 foot catamaran. Yesterday was interesting because it was our first day doing shift work or, or watches that went through the night. Unfortunately, it's tough when you've had a adrenaline filled first day, everybody's all excited and nobody wants to go to sleep. And then you get told that your shift is in the middle of the night. So you're up until whatever and then you have to also be up for the four hours of your shift. So the way it works right while well, was going to work is we were gonna do four hours, then you'd be off for eight, sort of, except for there was a dog watch that was only a two hour shift and another one that was only two hour shift so that everybody would slowly rotate around the 24 hour cycle so you're not always working the same shift. So that was the plan. So last night I worked two shifts, uh, one early in the day, which was fine, we were awake anyway, and then one from um, 8 p.m. to midnight, which was fine, because you know I was a little tired by midnight, but, but I could survive. But um, now we've heard that one of the people doesn't want to do the rotating shift because it hurts their circadian rhythm, sleeping, and they'd rather just work a set shift every day instead of having those little two-hour dog shifts to make sure everybody rotates. Um, we all should just have a fixed shift all the time, two four-hour fixed shifts. Um, so that's fine, except now everybody's already switched around into their new rotation, and now we got to switch back into some sort of thing. We have to volunteer for which shift we want. Um, so the people, the person that wants to stay on a fixed shift actually doesn't mind working, um, what's the worst shift? The worst shift is actually midnight to 4 a.m. because you, everybody's going to bed, you know, whatever time, and then you've got to stay up until 4 a.m. And, and stuff, but anyways, but they said they wanted to do that. So there's two people that want to do that and stay that. So they'll be four, um, midnight to 4 a.m. every day, and they'll also be noon to 4 p.m. every day. So I'm probably gonna end up being the 4 a.m. to 8 a.m. and the 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. every day shift. So we'll see how that works out. But again, we're moving along. We're under both uh, Jib and Genoa right now, going downwind. And there's my picture out of my, out of my cabin. You can see it's not super windy, it's not super wavy. We're probably not moving that fast. We were motoring all night. And then while I was sleeping, I heard them shut off the motor and uh, put the sails up. And I could see it through the hatches on the top here. Um, this one here I can see through. And I could see the sails were both out, which is good. So we're sailing finally, because before that we were just motoring for the almost for the full first day we were motoring for sure. Okay, so I'll get out on my shift, which starts in seven minutes. Talk to you in a bit. Okay, here I am out on my morning 8 a.m. to noon watch. We have a true wind behind us of 15 knots and because it's directly behind us we're able to get our Genoa and our jib wing on wing just warm enough to be in a t-shirt <laughs> any cooler I want to have a sweatshirt but it's gonna get warmer as the day goes on so that's good it's a nice motion when you're going straight down wind I mean it's kind of like you surf down and then you slow down a bit and you surf down and slow. I like that motion you can see some I don't know if it'll come up on camera, but you can sort of see that we get a bit of a, a swell following us from time to time, and it makes the boat speed up and slow down. It's just beautiful out here. Supposedly last night, one ship, which, which we all track on AIS, just so you know, there's AIS, there's ships that are around us. And uh, the cool thing about this is, let me just tap down one. So let's say this boat here, tap on it, and it highlights it, and then you click this and this, and you get the whole readout the vessel's length, width, depth, um, 
speed over ground, he's doing 16.6 knots, and he's not, obviously he's passing us. So his closest point of approach is not even registering because he's not gonna come near us. So close him. The only one that might is this guy down here. Oops, did I miss him? Yeah, I might have missed him. Okay, this guy, yeah, so his closest point of approach is 1.77 nautical miles, now two point, it, it'll fluctuate, but anyways, about two nautical miles away from us, and that's gonna happen in three hours and 19, 18 minutes from now, according to the estimate. So if he changes course at all, or if we change course at all, that number will completely change. And that's still quite a ways away, so he could still turn. And that's that. So, set that to, full, to center it. Center, center, there we are. And then you can zoom out if you want to see all the traffic around. Like most of the shipping lane is right here near Africa. There's Morocco and Eastern Sahara. All the boats stay near the shore. We're kind of a little bit further out. So other than this guy, we shouldn't have any problems with shipping. Yeah, I got my clip on. Yeah. All right, so that's it. Okay, I'm almost done my eight to noon shift on watch. As you can see, it's a beautiful sunny day. It's a little hazy. We think it's sand from the Eastern Sahara Desert that blows out and makes it look foggy, but you can see, still a very sunny and beautiful day. So we're doing a shift shuffle change. So I'm working till noon and then I gotta go back. I should have eight hours off, but I, I'm gonna be switching to uh, work with Paul, so I'm going to be off, back on at 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. and then 4 a.m. to 8 a.m. That's going to be hell getting up at 3.30 in the morning, but you know, we all have to do our part. Um, yeah, it was a good ship though. We just saw one cargo ship go by. Uh, other than that, no, but like I showed you before, the cool thing is that's the one that went by. Um, but if I zoom out, you'll see there's a bunch of cargo ships over by Africa. So, nobody's near us though. Not much to report, so the next shift is gonna start in 10 minutes. So after this, I think I might, this is the problem, but it's sort of on again, off again, try to sleep when you can. So I'm off duty now at, at noon, but as you can see, Cheryl and Alex are preparing lunch. So that means no point in me going to bed because I'll only be woken up to say lunch is ready. So. I'll try and eat lunch and then I'll try and have a nap because I'll be uh, back to work at 4 to 8 and then of course then I have to definitely sleep after that because I'm back up at 4 a.m. So I'm enjoying it but I am tired. I'm not used to sleeping three hours here, two hours there. It's just not, not quite used to it yet but it's only day two. I'm sure I will become accustomed to falling asleep instantly when it's my chance. So. Okay, not that Janice and I aren't already planning to get a catamaran, but if there's ever a sales pitch for getting one if you're on the fence, it's this. Check out this B-roll footage of us all having lunch together. I mean, we're in the middle of the ocean doing six knots sailing, and we're all just walking around like we're in somebody's apartment. There's sometimes three and four of us in the kitchen at the same time, or the galley as we call it, and there's things just lying around on the counter. I mean, I see a knife on a cutting board just lying there, bowls, cups, you name it, just there, and that's the way it was for the entire trip. You could put your cup down, go to the washroom, come back, and your cup was exactly where you left it. Even when you're sailing along at six, seven, eight, nine, ten knots, didn't matter. When you have a catamaran, the structure is almost always flat. It might wiggle a little bit, but never goes far enough to an angle that anything slides off. It's awesome. Yes. Beautiful day. Wow, look at that. Look at this lunch. Wow, spectacular. This is like a cruise line. Yeah, I know.
<laughs> and Dan, Dan's on watch for now. All right. 40 minutes into my second shift of the day, the 4 to 8 p.m. We've had another beautiful day. Now we got some wind too. We've got 19, 19 knots of wind from the aft quarter there. Both sails up. We're going along at 8.7 knots over ground. doing pretty good. I took a little nap earlier and uh, some of the others saw whales from a distance. Uh, pilot whales or something blowing, blowing their air. I didn't get to see it sadly but that means the first day we saw dolphins and bioluminescence at night and today some people saw whales. So that's good. Hopefully tonight I'll be on till 8 and I'll be able to see uh, bioluminescence again tonight. Fingers crossed maybe even some dolphins. Okay, I'm halfway through the shift. One thing I wanted to show you is there's this constant haze for the sun, still a fair ways above the horizon, but it's not very bright. And it's because it, it looks like humidity. If I didn't, if I was back home, I'd think that's a, uh, a rain shower coming. It's kind of a white sheet on the ground, all the way to the water level. Um, but it's actually, we believe, dust from the, over there is, uh, Africa and Eastern Sahara deserts there and we think that that's just dust particles from the uh, Sahara Desert and it's been like that since we've left uh, the Canary Islands you can't really see that far on the horizon because of this dust so that's kind of interesting being my first passage one thing I'm finding is the constant banging of the sails I don't know if you're gonna hear it while I'm while I'm talking to you, but the sails flap when we get hit by big swells. And we get some slap underneath the deck uh, from the bridge deck clearance, the waves come up and hit the bottom of the catamaran. So it's, it's some, it take, takes some getting used to. I'm a pretty light sleeper. So what I find is I fall asleep and then some big bang happens. And since my brain doesn't know what it is, I wake up and then I realize what it is and I try to fall back to sleep. So it's been challenging for me. Now it's only their second full day. I'm sure over time I'll get used to all these bangs and slams and sails flapping and all that stuff, but uh, it's taking some getting used to and it makes me tired. So you can tell from my eyes, but even though I'm supposedly in bed more than eight hours so between my two shifts, I still feel lethargic all the time. So anyways, something to keep in mind. If you're doing a long passage, be prepared. <laughs> A lot of noise, a lot of banging. Like I thought, right after <clears throat> I finished recording the last part, uh, showing you the dust, the sun went just a little bit further down, and now there's no sun. So clearly, that dust is very thick. And it's everywhere, in every direction. It's uh, definitely in sand or dust and not humidity. I mean, even the sun will burn through humidity, so it can't be that. But interesting to be so close to a desert that it actually blots out large portions of the ocean. If you look at this, if I zoom out, there's the Western Sahara. But we are, God, we are hundreds of miles off that. This line here is 150 miles from us to there. So we're, we're probably 175 miles off the shore of the Western Sahara. And we're still getting sand and dust out here. That's, that's crazy. So, and it's not like it's really super windy where you would expect it to blow a long way. So, I've never experienced this before. Thought I'd share it with you.
one thing I wanted to mention, about two and a half hours into my uh, my watch now, and you tend to be on watch, I mean, there's people around, like you can see Cheryl in there making dinner, 6.30 now, she's probably gonna have it for a round shift change, which is 8 p.m. And uh, when you tend to do watch, you tend to sit up here by yourself a lot, and for extended periods of time. And as I've shown you many times, we're panning around, there's nothing to really look at, <laughs> it's just water. And every once in a while, a ship, maybe 50 miles away, will show up on your AIS. So, you know, you're supposed to look around every 10 to 15 minutes, make sure there's not some uh, fishing boat or something that's not with AIS that doesn't pop up in front of you unexpectedly. But other than that, there's not much to do. So this is my thing that you, most sailors do, is bring some audiobooks or some podcasts along. <laughs> Plenty for your entire passage because you won't have internet to get new books or new podcasts, but if you come with enough, you'll make it through the passage. You really need hours and hours and hours of this stuff. Because otherwise you'll feel very lonely staring around at water for like four hours at a time. So just my tip to you. Talk to you later. That's the end of this episode where I give you a little inside glimpse of what it was like to live on a moving sailboat. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. It helps the channel a lot because it tells YouTube to suggest it to more people. There's plenty of sailing goodness in the episodes to come, so hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any episodes. Also, you can hit the notification button, which will send you an email when the next episode is available. What you'll see in the future episodes is that this is a downwind passage, but it had a lack of wind. So first we tried a wing on wing, and then we tried to break out the spinnaker. Anything to get a little bit of speed going. It may not have been a windy passage, but it sure was a pretty one. A special thanks to the patrons that support the channel. Without them, this wouldn't be possible. Anyways, there's lots to look forward to. I hope to see you in the next one. And until next time, this is Craig signing off, wishing you safe cruising.